Look out, y'all. The millennials are not happy. Look out. The youngsters are hot, ticked, angry. Because all these, quote, old folks, end quote, the boomers. What do we call the other ones? Gen X? What am I? Gen X? Uh, Listen, young people are not happy right now at how much they have to pay for houses and how much they have to pay to borrow money. And they are not happy that there's a bunch of people out there with cash, whether that is older folks or institutional investors, supposedly buying up all the houses. We're going to get into it today, folks. We're going to answer those questions, discuss those topics. But more than anything, we want to discuss what you want to discuss when it comes to your DFW residential real estate. We are the Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. We specialize in homes on land large lots, as well as the most desirable neighborhoods in all of DFW. And that's what we do all day, every day throughout the week in order to bring you this show to be a value add for you and your life. What are your questions? Call or text those in right now, 214-310-0008. You're listening to DFW Real Estate with Todd Tremonti. It's not just me. We've got a full studio today. Call or text your questions, 214-310-0008. And when we're not on air and you're not listening live, check out the podcast and everything else over at the website. ToddTremontiTeam.com. At ToddTremontiTeam.com. This first segment, as always, brought to you by Patrick Gleros and his team over at Cardinal Financial. If you're looking to uh, refinance, if you're looking to take out a mortgage for the first time, maybe you're looking to buy an investment property, go to PatrickGleros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S, PatrickGleros.com. You can start your application right there on his website. You can give them a call at 972-728-3420, NMLS number 308804. There was actually decent, we're going to call it decent, Courtney, decent news in the mortgage world this week. I am sure, literally zero doubt, that we're going to get into that throughout the show. So stick with us, folks. First half, second half, jam-packed, all kinds of info. Send us your questions, 214-310-0008. All right, well, let's kick it off by let's talking about the baby boomers world. Get off uh, my lawn! They're buying up all the houses, according to the uh, Washington Post. Listen, if the Post says it, hey, real quick, do we think Brandon Wyatt on our team, who doesn't technically from an actual age perspective belong in the baby boomer generation? He's 35, and he absolutely he does. He's absolutely a boomer. He might even be, attitude-wise, the greatest generation. He, he could be in his spirit... 75 or 80 years old. Yeah, he does I, not I think like 75 is still a boomer. At the, the boomers have made their way up. He does not like young people. Or people on his lawn or compl- any of it. It's, you know, he likes a few people, his people. Shout out to Brandon. He loves his wife <laughs> and his kids. All right. The question was, you know, are the boomers buying all the houses? And the answer is no, but it's, you know, it's, you know, on the average, it's a more convenient time to be in the market if you have had a lifetime to save some cash. We'll get into that here in a second. So basically the article is saying that first time home buyers are making up about 32% of the market, well below the average of 38%, which it's been since the 1981, which is when NAR started Tracking. getting all this data. Yeah. Um, they're also more likely that the first time home buyer will be in their mid thirties yeah, that's the in big contrast to the late twenties, like it was in the eighties. To me, that's the big deal. The percentage of first time home buyers does ebb and flow with rates and prices and job markets. But the fact that the average first time buyer is waiting five to six years longer or having to now, some of that was non-financial or not financially oriented. In the early years of the millennial generation, which I don't even, there's so, you look it up online, there's like a thousand different definitions of where generations start and stop. Um, But the point is, the early years of millennials entering the home buying generation, the, the, the consensus was they're just not buying houses. And it wasn't because of pricing, because pricing was relatively reasonable and rates were unbelievably low. It was this sense that that generation didn't want to do what previous generations did and set down roots as early. They wanted to travel and explore and be less committed to long term. Well, that has changed and it has changed dramatically. Um, Starting in late 2019, early 2020, the headlines flipped to, okay, here come the millennials. They are buying now and they're buying and there are not enough houses for them. 
and statistically, mathematically, that is still very much true right now. So all that said, um, there is some truth to the idea that are the baby boomers, are the, you know, uh, adult, you know, kind of the older portion of the still buying and selling residential real estate a lot, that crowd, are they dominating the market? Well, they're dominating a lot of negotiations from the perspective that many of them are able to buy with cash. They are not as sensitive to mortgage rates. Therefore, they're having a bit of a heyday right now where prices in a lot of areas have gone slower in the appreciation or they've gone a bit flat or even dipped in a few areas. Even here in DFW, a few areas I think we could accurately say have dipped a little bit, especially in other parts of the country where we've seen pretty reasonable reductions in housing values. We're not seeing as much of that here, but you've seen baby boomers that are able to go, look, well, I was going to downsize, but I could afford to upsize or I was going to downsize, but I can actually get a nicer, newer home, even if it is smaller square footage wise. Uh, and I'm not having to compete with any other buyers and I don't have to worry about a seven or 8% rate because I'm paying cash. So it's been a bit of a heyday. Now I do think that time will come to an end relatively quickly and we'll get into why I think the market's going to change here pretty soon, a little bit later in the show. Yeah, I mean, just to give you a couple of other numbers. So in 1980, 81, first time home buyers was like 28, 29 years old. Repeat buyers, you know, the median age for a repeat buyer was like 36. Right. Now the median age for a repeat buyer is 58. Yeah. I mean, that's a substantial yeah. change. Well, and it's grown over the last 10, 11, 12 years due in part to very low inventory, meaning people just didn't have a lot of options of where to go. Um, in the last two years, that's grown probably two whole years and two whole years because so few people have wanted to let go of a home that they bought at 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021 prices at those rates. Um we don't have time. We're not going to go through the whole historical trajectory of prices and rates today. But the fact is, yeah, people have been reluctant to leave their homes. When I was coming up in the industry in, you know, the early 2000s, the, the idea was people move every five to seven years. Well, that has grown a lot over the last five to seven years where people just aren't leaving as quickly. Now, I do think that will probably change again but it's going to be a little while before we see that kind of frequency again because it's going to take more inventory and more affordability. Yeah, I mean, just to give you any kind of another idea of things and maybe a little hope for some people, um, there's a, an article here on the Real Deal real estate news, and it's DFW-specific, mm -hmm. but it says that the, uh, the, the average price, the median price, has now fallen below 400000 for the first time since March in DFW. Yeah. So the median price, it was $398,000 in the month of October. Um, now, it makes a point of saying, hey, this was the fourth straight month that home prices have declined. Mm -hmm. But chill, because we're still up 41% from March 2020. Yeah. But yeah. it has at least softened yeah. a little. So, bit. so we probably went up, by the way, it's not down much, but call it 43 or 44% from March of 2020 and we've slid now median and average are dangerous words. You have to be careful there. We've slid one or two or three points uh, market wide. Now, let me be very clear with you. Those numbers can be wildly misleading. That doesn't mean your home has gone down that much. That means the median of what is selling has gone down that much. And that and it could vary so much like Collin County in this article, the median is 510. That now, hasn't changed in the last year. Think of it this way. That doesn't mean home values in DFW are down 3%. It means the price of what people are buying and selling right now right. has gone down. So people have just lowered their budget and they're buying the lower priced houses. Um, or the higher priced buyers and sellers aren't moving much right now. It doesn't mean, it, it. in some areas, it could mean that house was worth 410. Now it's worth 398. But in a lot of places, it just means people aren't going after the 410 houses anymore. They're going after the 398s. And I know that sounds like trickery or funny math, but the, the definition of the words and the numbers matters as much as the numbers themselves. And so people's budgets have come down. It doesn't necessarily mean the value of the houses has come down much. There are some pockets and areas where the value, we've seen some homes sell for a little bit less than previous years, or 
where they've sold for a little bit more, but not a lot more, or they're worth about the same. That's more of the feel of the market right now is it feels a little flat, but there are absolutely areas where numbers are up and they're up a good bit. We are still helping home sellers break all-time records, meaning we still guarantee to help home sellers sell their home for over the average price and under the average time. We still guarantee that. As long as we choose to work together and we're not a perfect fit for everybody, we don't choose every client, every client doesn't choose us. But when we choose to work together, we guarantee to sell that home over the average price and under the average time for the marketplace. And many, 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 many times we are still breaking the all-time high sales price for that area. So those are absolutely still possible. But generally speaking, the market feels a bit slow, a little flat. And to the, the point of this article, which is not wrong, the median sales price has slipped below 400 for the first time since March. Now, it slipped for four months in a row. This data is accurate uh, as of like June or July. So that is not a wild market trend, but it is something October. worthy of note. It was okay, uh, October. Yeah, it was October. Okay. Um, so all that to say, um, that's worthy of your attention and it is an opportunity. I believe that the home buying opportunity that has existed this year is not going to be here uh, a whole lot longer. That doesn't mean it won't be a good time to buy, but it won't be as good of a time to buy if we see a real upswelling in the spring, whether that has to do with inventory or interest rates or just seasonal markets. Um, I think there's a great opportunity to be buying right now and the opportunity to sell is good and the opportunity to sell might get a little bit better. So if you have questions about that, give us a call 214-310-0008 or you can go to the website online anytime, cell phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, whatever device you've got. Todd Tremonti team.com Todd Tremonti team.com. If you can't spell that, just Google Todd Tremonti. I promise you'll find us call, text, email, fill out any form, send in a question on any chat bot you can find related to us. And we will make sure we get you taken care of dp.lambert l-a-m-b-e-r-t dp.lambert at goosehead.com is how you can reach out to dp. If you haven't shopped your car insurance, your home insurance, uh, he can do that. Him and his team will do that for you. They're going to work to get you the best price with the most coverage. Uh, I've been working with DP for years now. Todd has too. So yep. many of our clients have. So many of our team members do. Friends, family, you name it. DP has been helping them all. DP.Lambert at Goosehead.com. 214-614-8595. Go to ToddTremontyTeam.com. Click the radio tab and you can find all of the recommended pros and vendors right there. Hey, Courtney, did you see DP's new puppy? I mean, he literally flew four states to buy a puppy and is posting social media from the perspective of the puppy. Like, it's it's no longer DP over there, y'all. We may be buying and selling insurance from this puppy. It's a whole thing. Google Todd Tremonti and check out over 700 five-star reviews. If you haven't checked out your home valuation recently, Go to TotraMoneyTeam.com, click the Home Valuation tab, and in less than a minute, you can find out what your home would sell for. You can see what it would rent for. You can even get a cash offer if you're thinking about selling and you want to get details on a cash offer. One of our team members will reach out to you and have a conversation with you about that. Just go to TotraMoneyTeam.com and click the Home Valuation tab. If you have questions about your home buying, home selling, or, and this is a big one, or just enjoying your home more, Give us a call anytime. Call or text 214-310-0008. You should save that phone number in your phone, whether you're a first-time listener, first-time viewer, or a lifetime fan. 214-310-0008. Save it in your phone number. Todd Tremonti, Todd Tremonti Realtors, whatever. And anytime we can help you find a vendor, make a decision on a remodel, of course, buy and sell, but it doesn't have to just be buy and sell. You know, if you're looking for new windows or a roof or whatever the case is, let us know. We would love to add value in your life and make your home ownership and enjoyment of your home uh, a more peaceful, enjoyable journey. That's 214-310-0008. Let's talk about how we think 2023 is going to finish. And then maybe let's get into a little bit about how we think 2024 is going to begin, especially in that first quarter, as it pertains to interest rates and what that's going to mean for home buyers, home sellers, because essentially what we're, we're looking at is the thought out there is that the Fed will begin to cut interest rates based on 
a weakening job market, right? So if we look at uh, data and numbers, uh, last month, there was 150,000 jobs that were gained. And that's one of the weakest months in the past three years. So unemployment rate has risen to 3.9%. That's almost a two-year high. There's just so much data out there that says, hey, yeah. something has to happen. I promise our our viewers, our listeners, our friends, our neighbors, our clients, that we do not want this to be a program full of statistics and boring, annoying data. But th these are the things that we pay attention on your behalf so that we can lead and guide and advocate for you. That's right. We get bored on your behalf, everybody. That's right. I, I just slog through the articles. It's true, though. The answer is this. At the moment, the Federal Reserve is believes that they are achieving their goal, which is slowing the economy down. So everyone will stop spending and pushing the prices of everything up. It's way more complex than that, but that's the summary. They're starting to see signs that that is working, that the economy is slowing down, that people aren't hiring as much. Somehow, some way, they're actually happy that there are fewer new jobs and that people's incomes are going up slower, which is bad for all of us. But in theory... It's good for all of us because it causes the cost of goods and services to slow down their rapid increase, which is making affordability hard. So trust me, there's plenty of politics and economics and opinions and bias all wrapped up into that. But the fact is, as of this week, there are some reasons to believe that their approach may change late this year, early next year. As a matter of fact, the National Association of Realtors put out a very optimistic call announcement press release this week saying that they absolutely confidently believe that by the end of the year, we will see interest rates, mortgage rates, which are different than the federal reserve rate, federal funds rate, mortgage rates start to come down soon, meaning like November, December this year. And they believe by springtime, we could see mortgage rates somewhere in the sixes again. Now, somewhere in the sixes does in fact include like 6.99. But for a lot of people that just paid eight and a quarter, that would be an absolutely worthy refinance. All that to say, we are starting to see the phones ring again where people are like, hey, if that's the case, I want to buy now at those flat, maybe slightly lower prices than before. And I will do that at 7.75 or 7.9 or eight. And then refinance as soon as I see a six in the front of anything. And if it goes lower, I'll refinance down to that. That is an intelligent strategy. I can't promise you that rates are going to do what US or UBS or National Association of Realtors or many of the big banks are predicting as of this week. I can't promise you that's going to happen, but they're very, very smart people predicting that these things are going to happen. And the typical economic signs indicate there is some reason to believe that rates will not go up anymore, might stay flat, or potentially, and a lot of people are starting to think, begin to come back down fairly soon. Well, and the thing that we've been telling everybody for a long time now is as mortgage rates are going to come down a little bit, demand is going to increase substantially. Okay. Say right? that in the most obvious, boring way that a first grader would understand it. When if, if, if it's cheaper to borrow money, more people want it, more people want it and they want houses. And when more people want houses, they do what? They go get mortgages and they buy houses and they and can they pay more money and they pay more money. Right. So I'm not trying to be insulting. No, applications increase. This is just in the last week because so they've gone slightly back up again now. But last week they went down. You're talking like about mortgage, mortgage applications. Rates. Mortgage rates okay. went down. The But the applications, as soon as that happened, applications went up 3%. Yep. And they barely moved. Yeah. So they, if we saw a quarter point. 7.7 or 7.8 instead yeah. of 8 or 8.1. So if we see a quarter point or a half point, or as they're calling for, potentially from a little over 8 to a little under 6 within a three-month period, even if only 5% changed, that's going to change the market. Yeah. But people are predicting it could be more like a 30% increase in mortgage applications. The fact is people want homes. They've been sitting on the sidelines, and as soon as they see signs of optimism, they're going to come roaring back in. It is not a brilliant or original thought to say, get the house at the best price you can now, even if you have to have a higher rate than you want, because you could lower the rate later with a refinance if they come down. And that is if, because nobody knows. But very smart people in banking and economics and finance are starting to predict that that's going to happen relatively quickly. If you're thinking about buying, we need to talk 
very, very soon. 214-310-0008. That's 214-310-0008. Or you can find us online at ToddTremontiTeam.com. Find out what your home would sell for right now in under a minute at TodgeMoneyTeam.com. If you don't have a home warranty, if you have no idea what a home warranty is, you can go to HelloSuper.com for super home warranty. That's who uh, our clients use to every single one of our listings uh, is covered by uh, as it's getting ready to go on the market. It's who we recommend all of our buyers uh, use as well. Super home warranty. They offer tons of different products and packages just go to hellosuper.com where you can find out all the things that they offer that's right by the way if you need any professional or vendor or home related or moving related person or expert and we don't talk about them regularly on the show you can still reach out we would be glad to help you find somebody or point you towards somebody that our clients have had success with all you got to do is text us 214-310-0008 you can go online to the website, TodtramaniTeam.com. You can Google Tatramani. We truly, genuinely want to be helpful to you. Of course, we'd love to earn your business if the time is right and you're a fit, and you are definitely a fit if you want to buy or sell a home on one to five acres, or if you want to buy or sell a home in some of the most desirable neighborhoods all across Dallas, Fort Worth. 214-310-0008 or TodtramaniTeam.com or Google Tramani. If you don't know the condition of your roof currently, you are at risk. And I'm not trying to scare you. Those are just the facts. If you don't know if your shingles are in good condition or if you've had some hail damage or if you, you know, the seals around the vents and the boots and the ducts and all these things that are coming through your roof. If you don't know that those are rock solid, as we get the heavy rains and winds and sleet and hail and even potentially snow as we head into wintertime, you're putting everything under that roof at risk. So we want you to go to pmrroofing.com pmrroofing.com. Uh, ask for our buddy Jordan. The whole crew over there is going to take really good care of you. Look you in the eye. Shake your hand. Do what is right for you. If something needs to be done, they'll do that fairly. They'll do it quickly. They'll do it professionally. And if nothing needs to be done, they'll tell you that as well. pmrroofing.com. Now, if you're thinking about buying, selling, or investing in real estate in 2024, our team does something we call free strategy sessions. That means we either jump on Zoom or you can come into the Fort Worth office or the Richardson office and sit down. We'll buy you a cup of coffee or a Coke or a water, whatever you're into. We might even do a Topo Chico. And we will answer whatever questions you have about the market, about rates, about pricing, about availability, about remodels, about getting ready to sell, about getting ready to buy. Our goal is to alleviate the fear, the anxiety, or just the lack of clarity as you look forward to 2024 to buy, sell, or invest. We call that a free strategy session. It costs nothing, obviously, no obligation needed. And that way you move into the new year with confidence and clarity, whether you wanna do something in January or next December or years ahead. Give us a call, we'll set one of those up for you right now. We'll get you on the calendar before they all fill up. 214-310-0008. That's 214-310-0008. Or you can go online to ToddTremontiTeam.com and you can request a free strategy session through any link, any form, or any phone number. Live from the Keen Landscaping Studios with Full Price Courtney and the English Wonder himself, the Yanni Donnie, we're back. It's my radio voice, Ian. I don't know if you know that. We're back. It's a voice. It is my radio voice and you will respect it. It's a voice. Uh, if you've got questions, folks, you know what to do. 214-310-0008. That's 214-310-0008. I want to just give a quick shout out for Patrick Glaros and his team who have really been killing it for our family, my family, this year. We bought a home, tore our old house down, lived in the other home, sold it, refinanced out of a construction loan into a traditional financing They've helped with every bit of it. They've been super easy, follow up, have great technology, clearly communicate. Patrick Laris is the only person I have used for residential mortgages myself in the last 20 years. I've never gotten a residential mortgage from anybody else other than Patrick Glaris. And I feel like you should probably do the same. PatrickGlaros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S. PatrickGlaros.com, NMLS number 308804. So take away the sheet so you couldn't see, but you're already looking at the numbers. I never looked at it. I know. Yeah, I, uh, uh, 308804. I've known it longer than you, young mm -hmm. man. 
let's talk about something that's exciting, Todd. Hip, ready? hip. I'm so excited. Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? Oh, we're not there yet? Not there Because no Thanksgiving's over. We're there. Did you have a nice Thanksgiving? I did though? have a good... Okay, gr- good. Now, one month till Christmas, Todd. I That's do it, one not, month. I do not subscribe to the mudslinging messaging that you cannot celebrate Christmas before Thanksgiving, but yeah, absolutely I can. do love Thanksgiving. And, uh, you know, we've moved into our new place. We had all the family up from all over the place, all over the state. And uh, I love Thanksgiving. I love my people, but I have a hot take. I've got a potentially controversial statement. Okay. And I'm going to make it. And I'm gonna just receive the emails that come from it, and I'm I'm okay with this. All right. Turkey's the least exciting thing about Thanksgiving. It's fair. You're okay with that? Yeah. Full price, Courtney. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about turkey being the least exciting part of Thanksgiving? I completely confirm it. Are we three for three on that? Yeah. You, like you're in? Yeah. Wow. Oh, I love now I never sides. grew up doing Thanksgiving anyway, so turkey was always our Christmas. Uh, yeah. meat and yeah. it was always overrated then too okay here's the thing Man, I, I, like, I like turkey yeah, I'm, I'm not saying I don't like turkey I don't love turkey and I like smoked turkey I love mm. we're gonna get into it okay because I smoke a pretty good turkey I'm not I'm not trying to say I'm the best in the world but I smoke a turkey that is delicious to eat but all the other stuff is so amazing like I can I'm not saying it would be right or healthy or whatever but I could roll up on Thanksgiving and just eat sides for three straight days a hundred percent or four I mean uh, yeah, I'm just not a big on American sides. That's fine. Listen, you don't what have- What are your sides? Yeah. Well, y'all do sweet potato, you everything. You don't like a casserole? Don't like sweet pot- no. A green bean casserole? We don't have time to tell my sweet fine. potato journey, no. but I can just tell you this. Until about four years ago, five years ago, I just thought they looked weird and were not worthy of my time and attention. And now you love them. And then I realized quietly that my wife has been making some of the best sweet potatoes for years. And I just didn't know because it looked weird to me and I didn't do it. Can't do it. I literally like had a bite at my aunt and uncle's house maybe seven or eight years ago now. See, in and England was like, we do- This is glorious. See, we do a Sunday lunch most Sundays in England. So we roast some sort of meat and then it's mashed potatoes, it's duck fat roast potatoes, it's roasted carrots, like, it's good stuff. Yorkshire pudding. Absolutely. Gravy, like, I just, man, I love that. As I so it's not once a year. <laughs> no, I was, but we, like, we now, do the same I thing. will say this. I'm a big fan of May's giving, where you do it all again at the six-month point, right in the middle. No. You invite all your friends over. No. You do the full deal. You just don't like being with people or what? Listen. No, what, I love a gathering. What is your but problem? it's just like I just want that meal on that. Courtney, day. you did like that, that finger is, sandwiches for the king's whatever. Queen, it was. I did. Coronation. I mean, Here's the thing. That makes no sense. You love gatherings. I love gatherings. We all love food. But I don't want We just said the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving meal. meal is amazing. Why? Friendsgiving, oh, by the way, over makes it special. I don't want to Yeah, I didn't call it Friendsgiving. I know. May's I'm giving. It's totally the midway amazing. point in May. Anyway, you use Friendsgiving, don't you, Connie? Absolutely. Yeah. God, you Knew are it. so con- you're. It's so hard to understand you. I know. Like you're it's all confusing. for you're it's all confusing. for being a, original and unique and creative, and then you're like, no, yeah. I want to do what everyone else is doing. A hundred percent. So hard for me to understand that. All right, fry or smoke? Smoke. Smoke or fry? I think the turkey. Smoke. We're talking about it's turkeys. Got, it, as, long as, as long as it's juicy. As long as it's juicy. Yeah. If you over smoke uh, it, we're done. Like, mm, fries going to be a little bit better. I can't tell my whole story about that. But <laughs> I. So sm- many stories you can't share I, well, today. Well, I, I want to be honorable to the people in my family who have made things differently than I for many years. My brother fries it Cajun style, and it's awesome. And then I smoke it traditional style. But I brine it, and I yeah. baby it, and I just butter it to glory. Mm. Oh, my gosh. It is good, but it's not as good. Now, hot take, and we'll move on from Thanksgiving food. You ready? Mm hmm. One of my favorite sides is actually three sides. It is long grain wild rice from Uncle Ben's. Peas and corn. All together? And I will mix it up like a child. No. And I will eat my weight in it. No, you no. enjoy that because no one else is no eating one it. Here's the thing. Here's the best that. part of that. I don't need any of the rest of you to like it at all. I love it. Mm-hmm. And I will go to town. You enjoy that while we eat the other side. I do. But I, here's the good news. I also eat the other sides. Green bean casserole into it. 
wasn't into it as a kid. We'll just destroy that now. Stuffing, ham, uh, sweet potatoes, hey, dressing. Corn casserole. Hey, if you put eggs in your stuffing, get out of here. Keep your eggs away from the stuffing. It doesn't oh, belong. I don't know what's got like you so- Like a boiled so, egg? What's got you so get angry it out today? Of the stuffing. Get it out. I love stuffing. What else? Real got quick. Got egg in it, hey, how do you guys like feel about egg. lime jello salad? I'm talking nope. cream no, cheese. No, no. No, Lime we do jello a raspberry jello. And pecans on top. Yeah, no, we do a raspberry jello. Okay, okay. I don't know what happened, but Ian's mic isn't working all of a sudden. <laughs> it's, something's gone wrong. Genuine question. Please explain this to me because okay. I've been trying to get an answer for years and I don't have an answer. There's no reason we call don't it. What is it with having a jello pudding thing uh-huh. with all the main sides and meat? Why do you eat it there? That's a dessert. Listen. I think it's like a cranberry it is. substitute. It's adjacent to the cranberry, which tastes best if it has can marks on the side. A uh, hundo. <laughs> what? Hey, thanks for bringing super authentic cranberry, but, but I was really looking for some ocean spray with aluminum can marks that's on it. That's me too. All right. I think that's probably the appropriate amount of Thanksgiving food talk for a real estate show after Thanksgiving. But people really burn their houses down frying these turkeys. Oh my gosh. It's like a. It's like making a bomb. People put creative you know to fry a turkey you you do oil some people do like a like an infrared but you can do a giant pot on a burner propane tank usually you get that water boiling or the the oil Oil. boiling or you know what i mean to the to the boiling point and then you carefully very carefully with gloves and a in a metal tool slowly lower a thawed turkey into the oil Now, what happens is people forget to thaw their turkey days ahead of time, and they put a not completely thawed or not at all thawed turkey into the boiling oil. And what happens, Ian? Boom. Boom, bang, Water and oil don't mix. And then oil and fire don't mix real well. And then fire and houses don't mix real well. Generally speaking. Generally speaking. Now, if it's it, contained in a fireplace, we're good. It does make me laugh when people very deliberately post the trolling image of them doing this like in the kitchen and they're like, am I doing it right? And the comments are like, no, don't do it. Don't, you're going to blow your house up. But if you know a friend who's a firefighter, just text them, how do you like Thanksgiving? And they're going to tell you it's the worst because busiest day of the year. Morons burn their houses down trying to fry frozen turkeys and it's super dangerous. I think it's the busiest day of the year. I think it's more busier than uh, July 4th is my understanding. I do think it's busier or more busy than July 4th, which is more about blowing your fingers off than burning the house. That's more the ER is going to be busy. Right. Hot take. Okay, that's enough of that. Back to the real (laughs) estate talk. If you've got questions about your real estate or your real estates, as we say, uh, you can text those in 214-310-0008 or you can call 214 Three one zero 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 eight, or you can go online to TajMoneyTeam dot com. Google TajMoney and check out over seven hundred five star reviews. Talk to us about surveys, Todd, especially when it comes to homes on land. What are they? Why do we need one? When do we need to get a new one? When does an old one suffice? Give us all the information you can on surveys. Fascinating topic of home surveys. Surveys are a process and a document that delineate that clarify, that document the boundary lines of the property. Literally, what is the east boundary and the north boundary and the south and the west? But guess what? Not all properties are squares and rectangles. So when you're talking about homes on land and you're talking two, three, four, five acres, they can get more complex, they can get more expensive, they can take longer. But ultimately what they're doing is they're a drawing that says, these are the boundaries of the property. This is what you own or would own and this is what you do not own or would not own. They also often show really important aspects of what is on the land, where the fence line is, where a pool is, where a well is, where a utility easement is. So it lets a buyer or a lender know what is the property. What does that mean? The improvement, the the buildings or the pools, sheds, barns, whatever on the property. And then where does the property start and stop? And then who has access to what parts of the property? So for example, the water company can come out and repair a big water pipe. Or the power company could come out and repair a power line above ground or below ground. The gas company, you know, those kind of things. Depending on where you have a home, especially on land, you may or may not have a gas provider. You might have a tank where they come fill it, but not an underground pipeline. 
you might have solar or you might have local power. You might have, you know, uh, water from a well, or you might have city water and or a well. So these things don't all apply to all properties on land, but the survey itself is telling you where those things are. The buildings, the boundary lines, and any easements of who can access and where a building line, where you can build and where you could potentially not build. And all these things are different in different cities, different counties, different states, different municipalities, different deed restricted subdivisions or neighborhoods. And there's still way more than that. There are overlays in certain areas, but the survey itself is the document that says, this is what is owned. And this is what belongs with this parcel of property. Sometimes you'll have two properties next to each other and they'll be on separate surveys. Sometimes you could resurvey it as one. And then there's a whole nother deal called platting, which is a different deal. It's a similar document that shows similar boundaries and different things like that. Uh, but we won't get into that. That is what a survey is. And that is how it applies most of the time to homes on land. So it's just giving me clarity to what I am purchasing yeah. and just kind of a full layout. Yeah, it sounds boring, but so let's say you're going <laughs> to buy a house. Important. Yeah, it's very important, especially if you're borrowing money. So if you're buying a house, you know, the first things people typically want to know, bedrooms, bathrooms, if you're buying a house on land, beds, bath, square footage, acres, um, you know, does it have water? Does it have trees? Does it have, can I have animals? All those things. But then when you get down to it, that has not answered all of the questions about what is for sale. Then you start saying, what is mine and what is my neighbor's? Where is the road? Is that on my land or their land? Is it on both? Where, what is the source of water? Do I completely control that or do I partially control that? So the survey is helping you with those things. Where can I build? Where can I not build? What's in the floodplain? What's not in the floodplain? These things are shown on surveys or potentially surveys and or plats or flood maps. All these documents are telling you what is it, where is it, and what can you do with it? And who else could potentially do something with it? And of, of course, that might make or break whether you want or don't want or what the value of a property is or whether the buyer sticks with the deal. And oftentimes the person that cares really the most is the lender who says, if we're going to let you borrow money for this, we need to know exactly what this is because it's the collateral it's the asset that if you don't pay us, we would have to take back. And we need to know exactly, precisely the value of that. And it helps the appraiser put a value to that as well. Okay. Um, then, <clears throat> excuse me, the next question we got was ponds. Yes or no? Do I want one on my land? Am I seeking that for my land? I am. I have two. I put them in. I didn't have it when I bought it and I put them in. Now, it's a personal preference deal. If you want a pond, P-O-N-D, pond, for fishing or water retention or to help with drainage um, or literally for a water source, um, obviously, yeah, if you want those things, then you probably want a pond or a bigger one, that which we would often call a lake. Um, if there's an existing one, uh, you're probably not getting rid of it. I've seen people try that. It doesn't usually go well. Um, but... Typically a home that has water, I mean, a land that has water, I'd say if you have an acre or more, having a pond adds value. Now, if you have a pond that is in poor shape, that could quickly turn into a negative. Most ponds in North Texas are either clay bottom or they have a liner so that they don't leak water. But because of the heat of our summers, we lose most of our water to evaporation. So if your water, if your pond doesn't have isn't fed by a lot of runoff or a source of water like a creek or a spring or something like that, you're probably going to have what we call a seasonal pond. That's a value add, but not as much value as a year round source of water. Make sense? Yes. So obviously ponds are cool for fishing and looking at, but they also provide a lot of function if you're going to irrigate from them or if they help with retention or drainage or water flow or things like that. So normally a value add, if they're permanent water source, they're a big value add. If they're seasonal, they're nice to have. And then if they're not in good shape or a problem or an eyesore, they could be a net negative to your value. Yeah, I wasn't sure what the negatives would be and um, the investment of how to 
uh, maintain a pond. Yeah, might look like, like. like a great way to buy a home on land and, and save some money is one that's in rough shape. And a pond could be a fixer upper, believe it or not. Like the liner's busted or it's, it's, it's totally dried out. You know, it's full of debris. Uh, it needs to be re-dammed up or re-dug and, and, and cleaned up. It's, you know, you know, a bunch of stuff has grown in it because it's been empty for three or four years, you know, or people have used it for trash or just silly stuff like that where you would think all it is is a hole in the ground. Well, it's a fairly well thought out and somewhat engineered hole in the ground that can add a ton of value to your property. There is such thing as, you know, property flipping, not just house flipping, right? So you buy a house on five acres, split it into two, two and a half acre properties, and they're both worth more. You buy a house without a pond and you put a pond in and it's worth more. You buy a how you buy land with bad drainage and you create good drainage and it's worth more. You buy a land that has no source of water or irrigation. You plant a bunch of things and irrigate them from a water source like a pond and it's worth more. I know people that do this in big scale. They'll buy 40 acres, break it into like 35 one acre plots, put in some roads, add water, add trees, add irrigation. And then they turn around and sell that for eight, 10, 12, 20 times what the raw land was worth, which is a value add to everybody, but it's a good business model too. Ponds matter. Ponds are a big deal. So what, I mean, I know the difference, but like a, a well versus a pond, a pond and a well, like yeah, how's so, the well serving me with the water? Well, we could spend just as much time, if not more on wells, because there's lots of different kinds, right? So there's kind of a groundwater well, which just collects the water that's in the ground from irrigation. And then there's like a true sourced well, which is down to below the water table where there's forever access to water or hits an underground spring or something like that. So you cannot exhaust it, right? You can use it and it refills like nearly right away within hours or days. Uh, a groundwater well is not going to do that. If you use it up and there's no more water in the ground, it's not going to recover or refill very quickly or maybe at all. Um, and then there are you know, wells that pump into cisterns. So you're storing water when you have excess and that's helpful. Um, they're like, I have a well, but my house is not on a well. I have city water in the house. And then I have a well that's kind of a nice bonus feature to help me save money on irrigation or, you know, whatever else I might want to use that for to top off a pond, that kind of thing. So there's lots of different types of wells. Again, a well is a value add, but a better well is a better value add and a less effective functional well is less of a value add. But with Texas is concerned about water right? In the heat of our summer, we have issues with water. We are tapping our local lakes and water sources and municipalities are concerned. They're putting water restrictions out and increasing the cost of water. Wells are a beautiful thing, especially if they're in good shape, have good pumps, have good power and have a true source of a forever source of water. In theory, once you have that well set up, other than a very small amount of electricity, you have no cost to your water anymore. That is a big deal in a state where we're concerned about, do we have enough water for our growing population and the cost of water increasing rapidly? So uh, if you're thinking about buying or selling a home on land, that's what we do. We do homes in the most desirable neighborhoods in North Texas, and we do homes on one to five acres. And of course we can do different amounts of land, but that's our sweet spot. We want to help you get that done. We can do other things as well, but those are our two big areas of specialization. Give us a call. If you're thinking about that, if you're dreaming about that, if you need to get something done, that is what we do. 214-310-0008 or online at toddtremonteteam.com. Again, 214-310-0008 or online at toddtremonteteam.com. Keen Landscaping was out at our new house this week, Courtney, putting in four new beds and replacing a few shrubs that didn't make it through the summertime. Got to admit, looks pretty stinking good. Really excited. Going from empty beds to full beds is a big deal. And then they really did a great job with the mix of shrubs and flowers. Feels pretty great driving up with that new landscaping. Landscaping matters, folks. It matters when you're buying. It matters when you're selling. And it really matters when you're outside enjoying the fall weather. Reach out to Keen Landscaping, K-E-A-N-E, -E, KeenLandscaping.com. I'm telling you about it right here from the Keen Landscaping Studios. They do great work. K-E-A-N-E, -E, KeenLandscaping.com. What else is on the agenda? Well, we're growing our team. You're not wrong. 
talk to us about why we want the best people on our team. Todd. Well, in short, we are not a typical brokerage where you pay us to work here and we just want as many agents as we can. As a, we, we have an opposite model. People do not pay us to work here. We invest significantly in our team members. Therefore, we are very, very selective. So we do a lot of interviewing. We do a lot of, you know, we receive a lot of applications and we just hire very, very few people. But we are absolutely committed to adding between three and six new real estate sales agents to our team in the next 90 days. We want to get that done before we uh, roll through Valentine's Day. So if you're thinking about getting into the residential real estate business for the first time ever, even though the world is shouting that now's a bad time, I give you my word. We will guarantee that you'll be successful if we're a fit to join the team and if you were willing to follow the system in the process. I guarantee you'll make six figures in your first year and you have the ability to double it in your second year if you want to work hard enough. Give us a call, 214-310-0008, or you can text me, 214-310-0008, or you can go online to TodTremontyTeam.com. We have a careers page. You can learn about the team, watch a ton of YouTube videos, and we can connect and find out if joining our team and being a commissioned salesperson in residential real estate on a team of people that love you, want you to grow, want you to help them grow and fight together for our clients to lead, guide, and advocate for our clients. If all that sounds good to you, head over to ToddTremontyTeam.com or text me right now and let me know that you'd like to apply. 214-310-0008. Google Todd Tremonti and check out over 700 five-star reviews.